Hi, and welcome to Community, the TV show. I'm Lucy Rubley, sitting in for Annette Sherman. Imagine a world where there is music everywhere. There is music in the air and music all around us. The world is full of it, and we can take as much as we want. Plato said that music gives us a soul to the universe, wings to the mind, flight to the imagination, and life to everything. But for some, music isn't readily available. Not all of us have an opportunity to experience music. For example, people in healthcare facilities, people in jails, people in homeless shelters, and even animals can't listen to music all the time. Here in Sarasota though, music is all around. We happen to live in a remarkable community where music is plentiful and local musicians have hearts of gold. We are talking about Upward Notes, a program founded by cellist Natalie Helm. It's a group of local musicians who come together to perform and create opportunities for bringing positive social change to our community. To, today, we will meet three of these musicians and we will learn how they are embracing the idea that music is a powerful elixir for change. First, I'd like to welcome Natalie Helm. Natalie, thank you for being with us today. Natalie is the principal cellist with the Sarasota Orchestra, and she is the founder of Upward Notes. Welcome, Natalie. Thank you so much for having me. Next, we will be talking with Songin Hun, who is a violinist with the Sarasota Orchestra, and she is also a musician with Upward Notes. Hello, Songin. Hi, Lucy. And finally, we have Priscilla Reinhardt, who plays the French horn with the Sarasota Orchestra, and yes, a musician with Upward Notes. Hi, Priscilla. Hi. It's nice to have all three of you ladies here with us today. Um, and I'm gonna ask Natalie if you would just start us off, please, by telling us a little bit about Upward Notes. Sure. So Upward Notes is a foundation that I founded three years ago. I won the position with the orchestra four seasons ago, and my first season I found that um, I just wanted to reach further into the community, and I thought that because it's such a supportive community, this would be a great place to start um, a program like Upward Notes. And so um, I started by just contacting local, mostly nonprofits, and our first performance ever was actually at a homeless shelter, and it was kind of disorganized, but I just had about 10 musicians that played all different instruments in there, and um, it was an incredible experience. And so I was like, okay, I need to make this an, an organized thing. And so we really, our goal is to take music out of the concert hall and into the community. Very cool, yes. it is. A, what yeah. a concept. Yeah. And what a, what a little bit about your background. Sure, so um, about me, I was born and raised in Louisville, Kentucky. Mm -hmm. um, I went to school in Philadelphia and Los Angeles. I lived in some random locations throughout the country in between the time that I graduated from school in Los Angeles and uh, moved to here. And um, yeah, I've been playing music. I started on violin when I was three, switched oh to cello when I was 11, and uh, because I was too lazy to stand up and play. My <laughs> mom did not approve at first, but uh, I convinced her that I really enjoyed the cello a lot more than violin. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so yeah, I've been playing for 20 years now. Oh, so. amazing. That's yeah. excellent. Welcome. Thank you. How about you, Song, and if you could tell us a little bit about your background. Sure. I um, was born in Korea, South Korea. People ask me, I'm like, um, I moved to the States when I was six. So I grew up in Massachusetts. So you might hear my Boston accent come out once in a while. Yeah. Um, and I went to New England Conservatory pre-college and then went to Juilliard for my undergrad um, and then Yale for my master's and and then how I'm, what yeah. brought you to Sarasota um, I started well I had friends here who invited me to play and I played with the Sarasota Opera for a few years but I really fell in love with the community here 
and just like it's really like no place else. So yeah, okay. Yeah, Priscilla. You're yes. On. Mm -hmm. So I am a Florida native. I grew up in Pinellas County, in a town called Seminole. For those who are familiar. Um, and went to Juilliard undergrad masters and then went to a program called New World Symphony. It's an orchestral training program in Miami Beach. I was there for four years and then luckily got to audition and be awarded um, employment here in Sarasota. So that's what brought me full circle. Great journey. Yes. Now I'm going to ask Natalie if you would start us off and tell us what are some of the different venues that Upward Notes will perform for? Yes, so uh, we've really branched out over the last uh, three years and um, we've played for over 20 venues that include animal shelters, schools, retirement facilities, hospitals, county jails, um, and um, domestic abuse facilities sex trafficking, safe houses. We've really kind of reached out as deep into the community as we can. So you've reached out to these different facilities yes. and organizations. Correct, yes. And how do some of them respond when you call? Um, so I usually do like the three-prong approach. Send the email first, send them links to some of the performances that we've done so they know we're legit. Okay. I tell them our background, I tell them the other locations throughout the city that we've performed so that they know we're you know, right. real, real musicians that uh, want to bring a real concert to them. Um, and a lot of times uh, um, I don't get a response to that. So I will either call or I will try to find somebody that has an inside connection okay. um, and go through that route. Okay. And they're always, most of, the, most of the responses are extremely warm and extremely welcoming. Mm -hmm. But I think some um, don't realize the power of music until after our first program and then they always want us to come back which is a really nice feeling. imagine yeah. not realizing that. You yeah. know, we have some photos if we could put those pics up of sure. some of the venues that you yeah. performed at yes. um, and there's Natalie with her sister. Correct yes that's my sister Rebecca Helm who lives in Boston Okay. Um, and she was visiting and so I had her play we did a concert at Pines of Sarasota. Okay mm -hmm. awesome and this is you playing at um, Oh, this is a Sun Coast Humane Society down in Port Charlotte, I believe. Okay. Um, so yeah, I was I have a friend down there, and so we decided to branch out even further south. Excellent, yes. excellent. And that's you at uh, the animal shelter locally, correct? Correct. The Sarasota County Humane Society. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, there you are again. Oh yes. Yep. yep. That dog's name was Rascal, and he actually got himself on the front page of the newspaper and got adopted the next week. So, oh, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, kind of a two-fold purpose exactly. there. That yes. is excellent. Yes. And you play at the county sheriff, the jail, the correction? Correct. Okay. Yeah. And um, I think that's it. One of the yes. Yeah, so we've perfect. played at the at the county jail a few okay. times. Now. And yeah. schools? And yes, yeah. Okay, yeah. a local school there. We had, that's a performance that we had 400 kids present at. So oh. that was a very, um, engaging and exciting and high energy performance, I to say the least. Bet, I bet. A lot of enthusiasm yes, there. Yes, all around. Okay, and then we've got Priscilla, one of our guests right in that, and Priscilla. I hadn't even seen that photo yet. It's yes. wonderful. Yes. Where's that, if you want to explain? That is at the Pace Center for Girls. Okay. It's, um, if I'm correct, sorry Pace, a day school that um, it's the all the students that attend volunteer to go there. Oh. Um, it's not anything um, forced. It's it's completely of their own volition, and the energy was really amazing there. It all just was so uplifting and empowering. Um, Which is so amazing that you're you're in a situation where there is this kind of destitute and, and the sadness, and you go in and come out feeling powerful. Right. I mean, I I think. We all go through these moments where, where you realize um, perspectives you do not have, mm. and you may never have. Right. Um, something as simple as someone, like in your home to cook your meals. Yeah. Um, I, I didn't have to do any of that growing up, and, and some of these students really uh, take on roles that are, are things I do now as an right. adult. Right. So it's, uh, it's inspiring, and, and it's, it's nice to see them empowered. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, humbling as well. Amount. 
Of course. Yeah, of course. Well, without saying. Now, Songen, yes. you were a part of the Gluck Fellowship back at Juilliard, right? Correct. Yes. Do you want to tell us our audience a little bit about mm -hmm. the Gluck Fellowship? Yes, it's for um, we apply to get the Gluck Fellowship, and it's more um, scholarship money for us to help with our tuition, our living. Um, but we don't. It's not like a gig where we get paid. But um, they sent a group of us to hospitals, to homeless shelters, to nursing homes, and. This was my first experience at just 19, 20 years old doing what Natalie's arranged to do. And it was amazing. Even at that age, it was nothing like I've performed before. I mean, it's, and you know, being in school, we've played at Carnegie, we've played at every sure. Fisher, we've played at like all the big halls. Right. But it's never as rewarding as going and playing for a child who's sick at yeah. the hospital or you know Aww. and that's and yeah. the more you do it like Priscilla was saying at pace mm -hmm. playing there the more community stuff you do the more you want to do them right Absolutely. Right. so I always told myself when I graduated and made lots of money yeah. <laughs> we are still waiting <laughs> um, I was I wanted to start a program where I could do these community reach out programs mm -hmm. but Natalie just went I mean that's why I admire her so much I tell my daughter I mean we do this little journal like how to make a difference in the world you know yeah. those growth mindset Sh things sure and one of the things she asked me she's like do you know anybody who's changed the world made a difference in the world Aww. and I thought and thought and thought, and I was like, yeah, actually, my friend Natalie. Yep. So sweet. Aw, oh, isn't that awesome. wonderful? Because yeah, it, it doesn't is. have to be a big, big change. And oh, now you you all are a part of that, right. making yeah. a difference mm -hmm. in the world. That's right. And I think if it just starts with one, you yeah. know? And, Absolutely. And it, then, mm -hmm. then it adds on. And so, Priscilla, where would yeah. you like to see Upward Notes go from here? Where were some of the performances you would like to uh, well, possibly... I, I first just want to echo Sangin in saying that it can be <clears throat> it can be overwhelming to think about creating your own program, mm -hmm. and so again, it's very helpful that it already exists. That Natalie right. has done this. It's it's mm -hmm. much easier to jump on and mm -hmm. and help her program grow than starting sure. you know ten of us starting each of our own programs. Mm -hmm. um, in the future, I think more of the same, just repeat okay. places or new mm -hmm. new places of the same type. I think would be wonderful. Right. Okay. So how do you all organize and prepare. Natalie, I w would imagine you choose the venue. Yes. Yeah. So um, I'll contact the venue. Sometimes they're repeat performances and okay. sometimes we try to branch out even further. Um, and we tailor the program. Each program is very different com depending on our audience. Okay. Um, so for instance, for the jails, I do not walk in with a full classical program because I feel like I want to reel them in and show them <laughs> that we can do cool pop genres okay. and rock songs as well. Yeah. Um, so I usually, I have this formula that I kind of use, which is like start with a classical piece, but like a light classic piece, Ina Klein is something that everybody actually knows, they just don't know they know yet necessarily. Uh -huh. um, then we branch into usually tangos or something <laughs> that is a different genre, but it's still very instrumental, mm -hmm. but they can kind of be like, oh, okay, they have a beat, mm -hmm. they have a beat, they know what they're <laughs> yeah, doing. Okay. Um, we can prove. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and then we've done for that, Sweet Child of Mine has been, and Teen Spirit have Ooh. been very strong um, <laughs> selections yeah. for most of uh, that type of location that we're going into. The uh, Let's see, substance addiction centers really have loved the, they were standing up and like oh. rocking out to these and singing along. And um, and then, and once I make that relationship and that they know that we can do those and have a program that's full of all these different genres and stuff that they know and um, already like, this, the repeat performances are easier because we can branch into a little bit deeper classical sure. music and, and show them that all of this music is something that they have access to now and under, can understand and ask us any questions while we're doing it. Okay. So, yep. Once they get the introduction, yes. and then you go from there. You gotta reel them in first. Okay, <laughs> excellent. Yes. No, in fact, we do have a clip I, we wanna show our audience, and I think this is where you were at the Pines? Correct, this okay. is Pines of Sarasota. Okay.
That's wonderful. You see these people sitting there as if they are in a concert hall yes. and enjoying themselves. Yes. And I'm sure you've got a lot of ladies tapping the feet Definitely. and the canes are going. <laughs> That's and, right. You know. We had somebody get spun in a wheelchair once. Oh, it was pretty exciting. <laughs> that is. That, that's rewarding. Yeah. Now, when you play, do you look at the emotions on the faces of the people that are in your audience and and does that give you some direction of where to go with your music definitely so um i'll speak about some of the performances at the jail and then i want song in to speak about the pace center because mm -hmm. i think she has a stronger connection with with that school um so at the jail performance we went in actually during the month of december and decided to do four um, holiday concerts for them and so we came different days and went into different pods and reached different uh, groups of people the way they have them divided in the in the jail um, we were able to one day reach just veterans and um, mental uh, health patients okay um, and that one was extremely um, moving because we started with uh, like the I'm blanking on the name Star Spangled Banner okay and um, <laughs> Interesting. Um, I am a musician. Um, and then we launched into the holiday and they were completely moved by the whole experience. And a lot of them can't be home for the holidays, obviously. Oh, and yeah. so it was kind of, we were able to bring the festivities to them, which, mm -hmm. was, which was interesting. And we had actually one of the guards of the um, pod come up to me and she was bawling. She said, I've never heard music this close and been able to feel the vibrations of the music. And uh, I was able to give her comp tickets to a Sarasota Orchestra performance. I said, well, if you like this, come to where there's 100 musicians on oh. stage making. So um, we mm. make those connections with the community. Sure. And so that's very strong. But Songen has a, a personal experience with Pace Center. And okay. I think you, yeah, you can elaborate on that. Okay. <laughs> um, well, I've been a supporter of Pace for a while. One of the moms at my child's school. Um, my daughter's school is on the board. and just these girls who come from broken homes, they've dropped out of school. So they don't have, like music is going to a concert is not on their schedule, you right. know? So it's always such an emotional experience when we're there playing because they're so supportive. And we had some of the girls join our quartet and play with us. And it was, um, oh. yeah, just to see them I don't know, just forget Interact. about, yeah. yeah. Oh, that yeah. is wonderful. Yeah. We That's gave them awesome. a five minute violin lesson and oh, they were yeah. able to come in and perform for all their mm -hmm. peers. It was pretty impressive. Cool. Yeah. yeah, it is. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. No, what about you, Priscilla? When, when you play your music, when you are surrounded by all this music, what does it do for you? What? For me, it's, it's I think, in, in both directions for the audience and for ourselves, it can be healing. All by itself, mm -hmm. it doesn't okay. have to be um, kind of like sappy music or mm -hmm. romantic music. It, it can be challenging. Mm -hmm. It can be new music. It can be anything. Um, I, I tend to just walk away feeling better than when I walked in, whether I'm playing or not. But right. mm -hmm. when I'm playing, I, I think, you know, just that exchange of energy between uh, whoever, whoever else you're playing with sure, sure. Um, is, is really magical, and it just it feels like therapy. Okay. Because I, I know when I listen to music, and I, I sometimes I can feel very nostalgic mm -hmm. um, and, and very sad, or if it brings me back to even happy times, the nostalgia. I mean, there's right. so many emotions that music brings to our, our front. It, it, and... and so you must see that in all the people that you perform for. Absolutely. Um, and especially in, in the venues that you're going into. They right. aren't there for entertainment. They are there for other purposes, and you are there to make them feel better. Right, mm -hmm. exactly. So, yes. And it gives us a chance to communicate in a way that I wouldn't be able to normally walk into um, a jail especially and strike up a conversation right? right right but this is kind of the introduction and we have that interchange of energies like Priscilla said sure we're bringing something we're saying hey we care about you we're thinking about you this is us um, enjoy this you know hour-long program right and then we do have conversations with them and right. and we make uh, these relationships mm -hmm. and they ask us to come back and and they can't get enough of it and you know, and so it's just, it's that interchange in the relationships sure. that we build in the community that we would have never had access sure. to. Sure. 
And then I would imagine that the mm -hmm. more that you build that yeah. with them, the more they see it, you know, hopefully their minds are saying, geez, you know, what am I doing in here? Yeah. I can be out there and mm -hmm. part of the world. And, yeah. and I can imagine that it would help people with mm -hmm. mental and, and addiction exactly. issues. Yeah. Um, so that is neat. But you know, it's not just we're giving back to the community. We get so much out of playing yes. for these people. Yeah. It's really just brings us back to why we chose music as our career. Because right. sometimes we lose sight of it. Um, you know, when we're getting paid to go to a gig, sometimes there's traffic and I'm like, ah, it's not worth the money driving, you know, an yeah. hour in yeah. traffic. But you know, one experience I had, emotional experience I had playing was after 9-11. Okay. After, at Ground Zero, there are rescue workers still digging up rubbles. And our musicians got together in New York um, and volunteered to play at this chapel where they come to rest in mm. between while they're doing their rescuing. And um, I remember it was below Canal Street, all the subways are closed, and we had to get out and walk through, like there's still, you could still smell the smoke, but there was no complaining there. Yeah. It was yeah, something right. that we wanted to do. Right. And it was so rewarding for us. Right. I still get emotional talking about it. I can imagine. <laughs> yeah. And w when you were there, you mm -hmm. had a lot of the, the first responders oh, yeah. visit you, mm -hmm. uh, people who, have, who had lost friends right. and family right. and so for you to to be out there doing mm -hmm. what you were doing knowing how it was yeah. going to touch these people and they're coming us and thanking us for being there and yeah. we're like you just yeah you're saving lives wow you know? wow that yeah. would be in oh my goodness so this is why we do right. what we do yes. Right. <laughs> yes yeah, yeah. Priscilla, what about you? Do you have an experience that you've gone through with your music that's changed you in any any way? Yes, I, I think for me, visibility is something I hadn't thought very much about. Um, uh, this is just sort of in, in the direction of race. Like I grew up in a very white suburban area. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't super aware of what I looked like and that it mattered, which was a very good thing for a number of reasons. But mm -hmm. as I've gotten older, I can see now, you know, that highlighting certain aspects of diversity mm -hmm. can be very important and very um, motivational, inspirational for other people. And certainly in classical music, a lot of mm -hmm. our big fans are adults, but we, I was in Miami and we, we did a concert and one of the stage crew came to find me and said, hey, uh, someone's looking for you. They want to meet you. I said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you don't think that you're even noticed sure. among the 100 on stage. Yeah. But so I, I, I came out of backstage and it was this little girl, a little black girl, who uh, said, I play the French horn and I, I want to be just like you. And I just, like, it's oh one of those things you're just like, yes. oh my goodness. Oh, it, makes it was it, all worthwhile. it was wild. And oh. her mom was there and, you know, they were like, oh, we'd love to get together sometime. And we never did. I, I would still love to. I don't live there anymore. But right. it was it, never every time. Yeah. Oh, that's oh, fabulous. That's yeah. No, I also want to ask Natalie, where we have just a few minutes left, but Natalie, you've named your instrument. <laughs> oh, yeah. yes. Yeah, I have named him after my grandpa, Enrico Critella. Uh, so I named my cello Ricky because they are oh. from the same location in Italy. Okay. But my cello is older than my grandpa was. Oh my. So my cello is 250 years old. Oh, my. Um, so I don't think they crossed paths. Cross, crossed paths yeah. ever <laughs> yeah obviously um yeah. but yeah so i named him after my and i, I understand that. that that cello goes everywhere with you he goes everywhere yes i take him into the animal shelters i take him into the grocery the bank anywhere that i need to go because he can't stay in the car so. and, and that is because he's too expensive or because of the heat or uh, both okay yeah he's right. literally what i own instead of a house okay so um <laughs> yes he's kind of my You're largest probably, investment yeah and um Excellent. i spend more time with him than my husband sometimes oh. so <laughs> <laughs> well you know what i think ricky's probably well received in the family yes, he you is. know he is now i also wanted to ask you um about your experience um on death row not oh, you yes. yourself, but yes. you played. <laughs> no, thank goodness. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think one of the most moving experiences for me was before I started Upward Notes and what kind of uh, got me into this was definitely a performance that I had for a uh, death row facility in Ohio. Um, and 
I guess the whole facility wasn't for death row, but it was on death row. And this woman came up to me and she said, my grandchild, who I've never met and never will meet, um, plays cello and she writes me letters. And I just, the connection between us um, mm. and she was just a mess. And, and she was like, I can't believe that I'm getting to meet a cellist and I can't wait to write her and tell her that I've met someone. Um, and so it was just very, obviously very moving oh, yeah. to have that experience and be able to hopefully comfort her for at least uh, that amount of time that I was there. Yeah, so, amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, ladies, what you do <laughs> is absolutely ter terrific. I, I mean, to have this as a part of our community, if somebody wanted you to play and perform, where would they, Yes. how did they get a hold of you? Please contact us okay. through our uh, Facebook page is probably the easiest okay. way to contact us, which is just just put in the search bar Upward Notes and we okay. will be the only one that pops up and then send us a personal message or post on our wall and we'll be more than happy to reach out. Excellent. So that would be contacting facebook.com slash Upward Notes. And if you would like to have them perform at any of your facilities, please don't hesitate to give them a call. We've so enjoyed meeting you ladies Thank today. You. Thank we you. appreciate everything you do for our community. And I think it's a wonderful, wonderful thing um, to, to, to give back, and, and you so mm -hmm. are doing it. So thank you out there for being with us today, for watching our program. If you have any thoughts you'd like to send our way, please do at communitythetvshow at gmail.com. Bye for now. Time really flew. We bid you adieu from community. If you want to know why we love it here, so check out community. Well, it's a who's who, a what's, when, and where show. It's a mover and shakers who care show.